Uh, we kind of like real science, but uh, we've been doing this since 2005. And when we started in 2005, and nobody believed me. Everybody thought I was very crazy to go into this. But as time has gone on, as you probably know, there are thousands of companies now. And when I started, there was only about three or four companies. There was hardly any publications. Now there's like over 10,000 publications a year. But the problem that's happened is the field has exploded and the consumer or the patient are very confused. The word stem cells being used, bastardized, used for marketing. And people are so confused what stem cells really are and what the real science is. And who's doing the real, the real treatments with real stem cells? That's been the biggest challenge for us. What are okay. stem cells and how are they being used in aesthetics? Okay, so in your body, in your skin, in your teeth, in all your blood vessels, you have what we call stem cells. Those are cells that don't have an identity yet. So I can take out a stem cell, whether from the bone marrow or whether from the blood vessel, whether from your skin, or your teeth, and I can program it in a sense to become a different kind of tissue. So regenerative medicine is basically the field we work in. And that means that the body can take its own cells and reproduce. So I can take out stem cells and I can make it grow bone. I can make it grow cardiac muscle, nerves, skin, hair. I can rejuvenate the skin. I can basically make you younger. Also, these stem cells secrete something called cytokines, which are the most powerful anti-inflammatories there is in the world. A cytokine is a thousand times more anti-inflammatory than cortisone or steroids, but has zero side effects. I want you to describe um, your laboratory setup and how you extract the stem cells from a patient's own body and how then this is uh, turned into a stem cell medicine that is injected back into their own body without any kind of interruption or uh, pollution or dilution rather. Right. Okay. So what happens is there are many kinds of stem cells. We focus on stem cells that come out of the capillaries in the fat. So you people hear adipose stem cell. There's no such animal as an adipose stem cell. They're really called stromal vascular fraction stem cells. So fat is highly vascular. So it's a good source for capillaries and blood vessels. So we extract a small amount of fat under local. We take it to the lab, as you call the laboratory. I love the differences. I like the way you say it better. And then we have technology that uses sound waves to break up the blood vessels and release the stem cells. Once the stem cell is released from its environment, meaning trapped in the blood vessel wall, it becomes activated. It starts secreting the cytokines. It starts doing what we call its magic. And then we can inject it. And the reason I found the beauty world was about 2006, I had a patient come to me and she had really bad arthritis. She couldn't get up. She couldn't do anything. And we treated her intravenously, meaning we put the stem cells into her bloodstream. She got a thousand times better. She's still better today. She's, she's not cured. We don't cure people, but the quality of life has been tremendous. I know in Australia, they use a lot of stem cell therapy for blood diseases, cancer. Um, yeah. And exactly as you said, it needs to be a hos in hospital treatment in, in, in the main to be affordable. And even then it's a really expensive procedure. In the US, and I know you work, um, in uh, the Middle East as well. How, how much has it progressed to what we might see in Australia? W what is the future looking like that we can potentially look to in the coming years here in Australia? So we do it in New York City, we do it in Dubai, we're opening up in Miami soon, we're opening up in South America and we're looking at London, maybe Australia one day, if you guys ever unlock yourselves. <laughs> but. But the, but the problem is it runs from anywhere from 10,000 to $25,000 for the therapy. And you know, it's expensive. For one area, right? But, well, it's one session, but the, the session covers everything. So when we inject your face, we inject your face, we inject your neck, we inject your chest and we inject your hands. So it's the big difference in 10,000 versus 25,000 US dollars is whether we give it intravenously. If we give it intravenously, there's a whole nother protocol to make sure it's perfectly sterile. Now, 
understand you said something true. A lot of stem cell therapy is done in the hospital and that's bone marrow transplant. So people say that's to me, right. how, right. how long has stem cell therapy been around? I say, how long have we been doing bone marrow transfer transfers for leukemia? It's been 20, 30 years. So there are probably a million people or more who've got bone marrow trans transplants over the years worldwide. And that is stem cell therapy. So this has been around for a really long, long time. It wasn't until like in the uh, early 2000s that we understood that you can use it more than just leukemia, that you can use it for orthopedics, you can use it for other diseases, and then understanding that we can use it for aesthetics, beauty, and hair loss. So, that, so, so people say, is it safe? The answer is it's been around for 20, 30 years, and millions of people have got bone marrow trans transplant, which is stem cell therapy. So the answer is yes. And remember, it's coming from you. When it comes from somebody else, there's a whole nother set of issues. So there is something called autologous, meaning I take you and I give you back you. And there is allergenic, where I mean I take it from somebody else and I purify and they give it back to you. The problem always is I don't really want somebody else's DNA or somebody else's something. I want my own. So when you're doing the stem cell therapy, so you're extracting the um, adipose fat, is that what it's called? Yeah, adipose okay. fat. Yeah, fat adipose. Fat's, the lay, fat's the layman term and adipose is the medical term, okay. but it's all so fat. Okay, so we're taking the fat and then we're spinning it in your centrifuge and then re-injecting the stem cells into the skin. Where are you getting the fat for the volume? So just what, one quick correction. We take out some fat, we put it through ultrasonic cavitation, which is high frequency sound waves that basically breaks up everything. Yes. Then we spin it. So we collect the cells, we throw away, quote, the fat, the lipids, but then we take out some fresh fat also. And we process that carefully because we have to put it through a small needle. And then, so we put in the fresh fat first, then we put the stem cells into the fresh fat so it lasts longer. Then we inject the stem cells into the skin, just like filler. So it takes three hours because there's a lot of lot to the process. It's not like come in, open the cabinet, open the box, inject it, put some ice on and leave. So the patient will basically takes about three hours to do this. So it's, it's, it's time consuming, but the results are, are, are remarkable. Can I ask you something? Can, can you get lumpiness sure. from this fat? You know, can, is that where it can go wrong if the skill of the surgeon or the doctor doesn't have the artistry of putting the, the placement of the fat in the right place? Or can you get lumpiness like you can with filler if it's not injected correctly? There, so there is technology and there's real science to this. And, and then you're absolutely right. There is artistic skill just like fillers, just like liposuction, just like anything in the world. The patient is your canvas and you're the sculptor, you're the artist and there are good artists and there's bad artists. You listen, I can give anybody a paintbrush, paints and a canvas. And some people can make, you know, Renoirs and Monets and the same thing. You are the canvas. The patient is the piece of clay. The doctor is really the artist. What's happened in America, I don't know about Australia, we have everybody doing filler, everybody doing Botox. Oh, we have nurses, we have hairdressers, we have just people doing it, dentists. And you take a quick course, you take of this. The problem is, some, I'll be honest, some of them are good artists and they do okay, but some are really bad artists. And the problem with bad work, it, it just resonates. People see bad work and it turns them off. Good work you don't see. You should so never really see good work. With stem cell therapy, what can go wrong? I mean, the biggest problem is that there are some people cutting corners. They're not really running labs and they're not worrying about sterility. So we're, we've seen infections. We've seen people put in too much and they cause necrosis. We've seen, as you said, lumps and bumps. Uh, and we've seen people who were just basically say they're doing stem cell therapy. We don't know what they're really even doing. And they're just unfortunately lying. It's so easy to tell, you know, tell the patient, I'm doing stem cell therapy. And honestly, they don't really know if you're doing it or not doing it. They have no idea. With um, stem cell therapy, one of the things that I'm most asked about in DMs and in like private emails is around virility 
and uh, sexual performance and enhancement and comfort. And is stem cell therapy something you can use for that as well? Because it seems to be all about youth markers. So I guess um, those are things that are part of the upside of taking a human growth hormone or um, hormone replacement therapy. So does stem cells help with that? So the answer is yes, because when you have you have erectile dysfunctions or you know orgasms, it's decreased blood flow and it's inflammation. So the beauty of stem cells, because they're so anti-inflammatory and what we call angiogenesis, mean they increase blood flow. There's two ways of using them. You can you can inject them locally or you can give them intravenously, and you'll see a big big improvement. A lot of the men. Most of the men we do for other reasons, like orthopedic reasons, will tell you they get an erection like they're 16 years old again. And these are guys in their 50s. Because, you know, PRP is promoted in America for erectile dysfunction, for better sex. We have the O shot, the P shot. So the answer is yes, it works to a degree. But remember, the amount of cytokines in PRP is, is vastly less than in stem cells. And remember, people will say, well, there's stem cells in PRP. There is maybe zero stem cells in PRP. If you're lucky, there's one. So there's no stem cells in PRP. Don't let people tell you this, 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 this kind of myth because in the blood, there's very little stem cells. And when we make PRP, we take out all the red blood cells and we just basically concentrate the platelets and break them up to release the cytokines. So PRP will help, but it really is not as good as just doing real stem cells, either injectable or intravenously. So it does, in a sense, that's part of youth. You'll also lose some weight. You'll get more energy if you do it intravenously. You'll feel younger, you'll live longer. And the stem cells have a unique quality when you inject them intravenously. They have a homing ability is it like go, a NADS treatment because there's so much you know excitement around NADS intravenous infusions because it kind of goes to the you know it has a homing uh, device yeah, I guess same thing uh, yeah it goes to the site of inflammation or injury and we did a study in Europe where we had a gentleman who had a really bad hand called Duprin's contraction and we gave them the stem cells intravenously, but we were able to tag them with a little radioactive dye that's FDA approved, put them under a gamma camera. And you sort of stem cells like, like really concentrate in his bad hand. And within a couple of weeks, his hand was much better. It wasn't perfect, but it was tremendously better. But we watched the stem cells go through the lungs, go through the body, and then seriously concentrate in the damaged hand. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please share and rate this episode. I'd love that. 